If it breaks to the upside here, where is it going? I've talked about this before, 48 to 50,000. That's what it's doing. Hello everyone, today Gareth Soloway discusses the latest job data reports and its impact on the future Fed's interest rates, and also reviews and analyzes the stock market, crypto and Bitcoin market, as well as big tech stocks. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. We have jobless claims out this morning. We have ADP private sector numbers. So again, these are both jobs numbers relative to employment data. The ADP came out stronger than expected. That's private sector jobs increased, more jobs added than the market anticipated. All right, what does that mean? Well, it again, puts the market in a position where we know the markets are expecting six to seven rate cuts, lunacy in my opinion, but six to seven rate cuts this year. The Fed has said three. This jobs number is a strong number. It again puts that in jeopardy. We also got non, uh, excuse me, jobless claims. Jobless claims coming in lower than expected, meaning less people filing for unemployment. That also tells us that data is strong, that the jobs market is strong. Walk over here with me, guys. All right, so let's analyze what we have going on. So both data points today came in better than expected in terms of strength. Okay, jobless claims better, low, less people filing for unemployment, ADP private sector added more jobs. That tells us the Fed is less likely to cut the six to seven times the market's pricing in, and we'll see if they even do the three times that they have been choreographing to this market. What do we think the market does when the Fed is less likely to cut rates? It sells off. Initially this morning, we were higher on the markets across the board. If you looked at the futures around seven in the morning or so, they were all higher across the board. Once we got this data, we now see the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, is down about $1.60. Not a huge drop yet, but following multiple down days in a row, this would now today, if we end down today, this would be our fifth day in a row to the downside. We can see again the technical level right up here. We've fallen down here. We're gonna keep a very close eye on where this market goes. I still have it projected out. If we're looking at a target where the market needs to stabilize, needs to hold, this is your level right in here. So again, notice all this movement up, and this is how you follow and find technical levels. You look at the bigger moves, and then where does it flatline? This is consolidation. This is where buyers and sellers are equaling out. That's why price goes sideways. Then we had the breakout, okay? So if you come back into this level right here, that's your technical area of support. It's right around 388 to 390 on the QQQ. Now, the reason I'm highlighting this area is not only is it support, but this to me would be a major level for whether or not the market can turn back up or does it break down and do we get a bigger corrective move than just a pullback from this massive move up? Now, remember, I said this yesterday. We, we had the biggest move up in the NASDAQ 100 since 1999. So, again, it's, it's kind of insane. Anyone who doesn't expect a pullback, it's insane. Like, that's just the way markets work. They go up significantly. They have to pull back a little. You get profit taking. We talked about taxes. Maybe people selling early in the year that didn't want to sell at the end of the year. They're taking money off the table. Now, interestingly enough, we also had some negative news out there in the chip sector. We saw, again, Mobileye is collapsing today. We're going to go over that chart and look at those levels. But Mobileye basically saying that their revenue for the self-auto driving, this kind of this, this new technology is going to be 50% down down from what expectations were. Now remember, Mobileye used to be owned by Intel. Intel still owns a huge chunk of Mobileye. So on this news, Intel is now pulling back as well. We're gonna look at that numbers or those charts in just a second. But again, that's negative for the semiconductors. Intel down pretty nicely today. Again, it's hurting the semis, even with Nvidia around the flat line. Okay, 
So let's go on. Now the spiders, remember spiders don't really have a lot, the S and P. And when I say spiders, guys, everyone knows, uh, or I hope you do, when I say SPY or spiders, that's the S and P tracking ETF. That's the one I trade off of, right? So it is down about 60 cents today, 60 to 70 cents. It's not a huge move by any stretch, but nonetheless, it is down on the day again. Same kind of deal. This would be, again, the fifth down day in a row. Same technical know-how on this, all right? Let's flip over to the spiders real quick here on the chart. Let me bring that up. So same thing, right? So we have the down move here. Where are we looking for in terms of technical levels of support? You still have a level all the way down here, which again is around 458 and a half, 459, but that would be your big level of technical support. Again, notice the sideways chop on the spiders, all right? So if we continue down, these are the levels that you need to look at. And the reason, again, just like I said with the Qs, the reason this level is important is because it is a pivot point. It is a point that if we hold it, we could go back up and make new all-time highs. If we break below it, now you're in trouble. Now it's looking more and more like an M top, a double top, or a Bitcoin 2021 type top. Remember that type of top. You had the up move, the down move, the up move that went a little higher, and then the bigger reversal to the downside. So that's really why this level and on the cues, that level is so important to focus on if and when we come back into it to see if it holds. This jobs data is showing us just that. It's showing us that chances are the Fed's not going to cut. Remember, the Fed funds rate right now is at 5.5%, basically, right? So again, you're at 5.5%, but the 10 years now, right around 4%. So what that's telling us, there's a 1.5% difference or 150 basis point difference between here and here, right? Between 4% down here. All right. Now, what that tells us is, again, is that as we get economic news like today that's stronger, it tells us that the market has to readjust from expecting so many rate cuts to somewhere back in the middle, where, again, is probably much more in line with what the Fed will probably do in 2024. So the Fed saying three, if we go back to 4.5%, we're basically at four cuts, right? If you're 25 basis points, each one, that would be a 1% cut from 5.5 to 4.5, boom, there you go. There you have your one, uh, four cuts in the Fed funds rate, or essentially that. Bitcoin had that big flush yesterday here. Um, the key on Bitcoin, I simplified the chart. I love being simple. Simple is so awesome. So look at this. This is all I have on my chart. All I have. It's a channel, two parallel lines on the daily chart connecting your lows and your highs. That's it. Basically, that's all I need to know. If it breaks to the upside here, where is it going? I've talked about this before, 48 to 50,000. That's what it's doing. If it breaks to the low, where are you going? Very simply, see this flat top right here, right across here, right to 38,000. So you have both sides of the coin here. You have both sides of the Bitcoin, if you will. All right, so again, simplify your charts. There's a lot of traders out there that do very well with a lot of other things. I like to keep things simple. I understand it better, uh, get too complex, and I get lost in it, and I start to see indicators that are telling me this, but then another indicator that's telling me this, and I'm like, oh my God, I have everything telling me different things. What do I do? Keep it simple. Bitcoin at this point is safe. Now, when I say safe, it doesn't mean it's not going to make a crazy move tomorrow or today. It means as long as it's in this range, it's it's kind of dead money in a way, meaning it's just chopping. And it's been chopping since December, early December, right? Really, there hasn't been much price movement. Once it breaks out, that's where, or breaks down, that's where you get your bigger move. Very simple. We have gold flat on the day, but again, it's continuing to get rejected at this 2075 to 2080 level. I honestly, at this point, am, am, it, it, there's not a question in my mind. I mean, there's always probabilities, right? So there's always a chance it doesn't break out and gold collapses. But to be honest, the chart... If you look at 100 of these charts, 1,000 of these charts, you'll see 80% plus, probably close to 90% of the time. Once you establish yourself above with a daily closing candle above the line, above this point, that's when the upside should kick in. And I continue to be very, very bullish on gold. Again, the inverse head and shoulder. And I think I've shown this to you guys before, but this is a very powerful thing to look at. Let me do this right now. If we zoom out, let's go to our weekly chart, right? So again, on our weekly chart, we have the, and uh, bear with me here, let me, yep. So, so basically we have our inverse head and shoulders. 
which is a bullish signal. We take our lowest point here to this point here. It's about, I think it's about $450. That means that this, when we finally do break out, we should go up $450 upside. That's where I get my target. The completion of this head and shoulders should be at around $2,525 to $50. So again, $2,500 plus on the charts of gold. Now, just to show you, and again, I always like to prove, prove my points, right? I, I honestly don't want any of you guys believing what I say. You should go and do the research yourselves. You guys should back test everything I do and you should prove it to yourself, right? That's how you really become autonomous in terms of your trading and your technical analysis. And the reason I say that is because very simply put, you had the same thing. I talked about this game plan in and it game plan out. If we look at this chart of oil, right? Same sort of formation, except this was like the head and shoulders, right? So the gold one is the inverse, it's bullish. This, is a, this was a bearish head and shoulder pattern. Your neckline was right here. If you take this move and drop that trend line right down, it actually played out perfectly from this break point down here, gave you your lows, and now you can see, again, oil starting to chop sideways. Today, oil's around the flat line, but it is holding relatively fine. Lastly, let's just talk about silver, guys. So again, silver continues to be a little bit weaker than gold. Yesterday had a big down move on gold on, on silver, right? Gold had a little bit of a down move. Silver, obviously, percentage-wise moved down. One of the things in the short term I'm watching on silver, guys, is this trend line here. It's almost a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern, a very minor one. But nonetheless, take a look at this. So let's watch and see. We have a trend line right here, right? This pivot point. And again, uh, this isn't the perfect ideal head and shoulders because it's not at the highs of the chart, but it is relatively close. And so again, you have this pattern. And so I'm gonna watch today, does it trigger? Right now we're fractionally below the line. If it closes down here, you actually could be looking at further downside, a measured move again from that high right here. Same kind of deal. You could be looking at a $20-ish target on silver. Now, again, the only way silver is going down there is if the economy starts to stutter um, and, and sidestep because it's an industrial metal as well as a store of safety. I mean, if the dollar really rips, maybe it would take a little bit out of that. But, but again, I'm leaning more towards the industrial side of silver. So silver, I still remain net bullish on, right? The, the bigger pattern chart, and just to show you real quick here, if you look at your bigger pattern, it's still very, very bullish on the chart. I want to just zoom to my weekly chart here. So again, this is your bigger pattern. Your bigger pattern, and this is where you get your bigger time frames, right? Your bigger pattern is this bullish pattern. This is a bull flag, there's no doubt about it. But in the short term, right over here, a little bit, this is that head and shoulders pattern, there's your $20 level. Even if we went down there, the bigger bullish pattern still is intact. So this again is where time frames really do matter where you can get a short-term projection versus a longer-term projection. Longer term, you're gonna to go to your weekly and your monthly charts and analyze the chart accordingly. Shorter term is daily chart that gives you one to two weeks out generally um, versus the weekly monthly gives you six months, a year, multiple years out. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.